you than, than to I, but uh, to me. But it uh, is certainly one that you should be very proud of uh, and is well known throughout the world in its uh, major aspects. Uh, to have an opportunity to talk to you about a, a mission to the moon is a great pr privilege. Well, that most uh, recent, uh, excuse me, that most recent uh, mission to the moon, Apollo 17, about which you heard a little, landed in the uh, Valley of Taurus Retro. Uh, that valley cuts the south eastern portion of a ring of mountains that surround a 740 kilometer diameter impact basin known as Serenitatis. It is one of many such basins on the moon and a very important part of, of, of lunar exploration is understanding those basins. This fault-bounded valley extends radially from the center of Serenitatis and exposes 2,100 vertical meters of the enclosing mountains. As some of you are well aware, geologists love to study features in three dimensions, and Taurus Littrow certainly gave us that opportunity. The topographic relief in the valley made it an inherently attractive area for exploration. In addition, basaltic lavas have partially filled the valley. As an additional incentive to go there, relatively young, dark volcanic ash appears to have covered many parts of the valley, the basin, as well as nearby mountains. As NASA management had rejected for some unknown reason, rejected my recommendation that the last Apollo mission to the moon land in the basin Silkovsky on the far side of the moon, the Valley of Taurus Crystal seemed like an outstanding alternative, if only second choice in my mind. And we had the photographic and guidance information necessary to land at the valley's narrowest point, only seven kilometers wide. The landing point is indicated there from about uh, a photograph taken by Ron Evans from about 60 nautical miles in altitude. Now after three days of exploration in Taurus Littrow, 37 years ago this month, by the way, four important geological findings had been made, including first the sampling of the upper 200 meters of one of the oldest and most titanium-rich basaltic lavas on the moon, boulders of which are shown here. Not only do these lavas represent the product of the early remelting of the moon's upper mantle, but they fill 1,400 meters of the valley's original 3,500 meter depth. Analysis of the debris are regular developed from these lavas confirms that high concentrations of energy-rich solar wind-derived helium-3 correlate with the titanium-rich oxide mineral ilmenite. 